So, good afternoon to everyone. I am Barbara Cappello, and today I will present you some um, of my research topic, which is primarily focused on the electromagnetic metamaterial, especially applied to uh, mantle cloaking and scattering reduction. So, uh, in this presentation, I will first give a brief introduction of metamaterials, uh, what they are and what are their properties. And then I will talk about the application of metamaterials, uh, which is mantle cloaking. And finally, I will show you a um, real-life uh, uh, geometry based on a width-modulated microstrip uh, line uh, metasurface, which can uh, be used as a cloak cloaking device. So, first of all, what are uh, electromagnetic metamaterials? They are uh, usually defined uh, as materials uh, which have pro uh, properties that are not common uh, in natural materials. They are based uh, on uh, periodic structures, therefore they are composed by a periodic repetition of a basic uh, unicell. And they can show, they can show uh, unusual properties, such as uh, in the electromagnetic uh, um, uh, field, uh, negative permittivity or permeability values. As uh, uh, in nature, the properties of, of a material depends on the atoms that compose the material and uh, on the atoms distribution. In uh, metamaterials, uh, the properties of a metamaterial depend on the unit cell shape, uh, size, and arrangement. Moreover, if the uh, unit cells are, uh, dimensions are much smaller than the wavelength of interest, the uh, metamaterial can be homogenized and we can define equivalent uh, parameters, such as equivalent value of permittivity and permeability. In uh, electromagnetic, Electromagnetism, there are uh, different applications of metamaterials. I have listed some, some applications here. Uh, they are used for uh, um, leaky wave antennas uh, or for the realization of absorbers material. Uh, also for the realization of materials which show uh, an artificial magnetic response. And uh, um, also for clocking devices, uh, which is uh, my primary research interest. Uh, moreover, in last years, uh, metamaterials are used not only in electromagnetics, but also in different fields such as uh, mechanics, acoustic, seismic, uh, and so on. So uh, now I will uh, talk about the possible application of metamaterials, which is indeed uh, electromagnetic cloaking. Uh, in electromagnetic cloaking, uh, um, a material with special, with special properties uh, is used to cover a target object, such as uh, that the object plus the uh, cloaking will have uh, properties of free space. Therefore, if we have our material and an electromagnetic wave impinges on it, we cover it by the um, metasurface or metamaterial layer, and uh, in the end, uh, the uh, object plus the clock will have the um, properties of free space and will be effectively um, invisible for an incident uh, wave. In order to uh, understand uh, how we can design a clocking device, we should first consider why um, we can see an object and why an object can be detected. So uh, if uh, um, electromagnetic wave uh, illuminates uh, a target object, uh, the object scatters the, um, the field all around it and therefore the total field is, um, uh, is distorted and uh, we can see that there, are, there is a shadow region beyond, uh, beyond the object and the field is distorted in all the direction around it. No? Okay. So, um, if you want to uh, make the object uh, effectively transparent for an incident radiation, we could uh, um, reduce uh, its scattered field. 
Um, this, uh, um, this idea is uh, the, fun the basis of the mantle clocking technique, which employs a metasurface coat to uh, clock the object. Uh, a metasurface is a two-dimensional equivalent of a metamaterial, so also in this case uh, is a periodic arrangement of unit cell. Here there are some examples. Uh, um, there, is, there are different examples of mesh grid, uh, Jerusalem cross, cross dipole, <coughs> and uh, another cell that I will show you later, which is based on a, meta, uh, a modulated pattern. And uh, when the um, unicell uh, dimension is much smaller than the wavelength, we can describe the metasurface by its equivalent value of surface impedance. This surface impedance uh, modifies uh, the boundary condition uh, at the object uh, background interface and therefore uh, connects uh, the uh, tangential uh, um, impinging electric field with the induced surface currents on the object boundary. By changing the dimensions uh, and the geometry of the unicell, we can therefore tune the surface impedance value and uh, tune the uh, clocking uh, response. I will show you just uh, the only one, the only formula of this uh, presentation in order to better understand how uh, mantle clocking works. So if we consider in this case a metallic cylinder uh, illuminated by a um, a uh, plane wave uh, linearly polarized with the electric field uh, parallel to the cylinder axis. Uh, we can write uh, the uh, scattered field from the object uh, as an infinite sum of harmonics uh, and in particular um, we, can uh, we can define two contributes. So the first one, I have my pointer. <laughs> The first one um, defines the uh, impinging uh, plane wave. The second one instead uh, characterizes the scattered field. Uh, we can see that there are these uh, uh, scattering coefficients which uh, represent uh, how much a certain harmonic uh, contributes to the scattered field. So if we want to reduce the scattered field, we should impose this coefficient uh, equal to zero. This can be done by imposing an um, impedance boundary condition of the object interface and the uh, impedance will then connect the uh, tangential electric field with the jump in the magnetic field of the object boundary. Uh, it can be proven that with an homogeneous value of surface impedance we can completely cancel one harmonic of uh, the scattered field at a certain frequency. So here there are some results. Um, uh, the object is made of a, a metallic cylinder covered by an electric layer and an homogeneous surface impedance value. Uh, for the bare cylinder, so just the metallic cylinder, we have three harmonics which contrib mainly contribute to the scattering. And we can see that uh, with uh, the imposing of this homogeneous surface impedance, we, we can or completely cancel one harmonic, the first one, or we can partially reduce uh, two uh, harmonics. And uh, uh, in this case, this is the better solution, so the solution which minimizes the scattered field. Here there are some results of the scattered field from the uh, bare and clothed structure. So on the left we have the scattered field just for, for uh, the metallic cylinder and instead on the right we have the scattered field uh, for the clock structure which is indeed uh, strongly reduced with respect to the previous case. Uh, we said that uh, uh, one homogeneous value of surface impedance uh, could effectively cancel one harmonic. Uh, the problem is when the um, object dimension increases with respect to the wavelength and more harmonics in this case contribute to the scattering. Therefore, an homogeneous value of impedance is no more sufficient to clock the object. An idea is to use uh, a modulated microstrip line uh, to um, realize our metasurface. So uh, we have a microstrip line with a modulated width. And this is uh, um, 
uh, on my de uh, on one of my design of a metasurface, this one, based uh, on a sinusoidally shaped uh, metallic pattern printed on a dielectric substrate. The unicell is uh, repeated in the longitudinal and antimutual direction and then is wrapped around the metallic cylinder. Here there are some results. So the structure, uh, the structure is the one that I described, so the metallic cylinder plus this modulated metasurface. And we can see the results for the total field. Uh, in this case, we are at 3 gigahertz. Uh, so uh, in the bare case, uh, the field uh, is uh, uh, distorted uh, and we see a shadow region beyond the object, while in the clocked cylinder the field is partially restored and um, it resembles uh, the um, uh, incident field where when no object is present. So the last uh, result uh, that uh, I want to show is the um, possibility to tune the frequency of clocking by changing the um, height of the modulated um, of the modulated cell. So in, uh, here in this graph we have the radar cross section for a bare cylinder, this black line, and for uh, uh, three different clocked cylinders with three different uh, um, height of uh, uh, modulated uh, um, cell. And we can see that by decreasing the height of the cell, we can uh, effectively change the frequency of operation of the, of the device. So last thing, if, uh, I don't know if there are uh, master degree students here. However, if you're interested in the field, there are a lot of uh, open problems, a lot of opportunities. Here I have listed just some of them. Uh, you can work with active or tunable uh, metamaterials. Uh, you can uh, work at terahertz frequencies uh, with uh, graphene, which is uh, often explo exploited at these frequencies, uh, or uh, you can work with time modulated structure. Instead, if you are a PhD student and you like this, uh, this field of metamaterials uh, and you want to learn more about it, next year there will be a course on it. <laughs> so, thank you for the attention and if you have questions.